Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Kevin Pack here. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. If you are a current subscriber, I welcome you as well. In today's video, we're going to be going over the basic step-by-step -step of how shipping works. What are your options? What can you do when it comes to shipping your product from your supplier to Amazon? How does this stuff work? Let's get down to the basics. Let's get down to understanding how this works so you guys don't get confused because I know you're like, hey, yo, what if my my shipment gets lost like what do i do I don't, I don't know i don't know okay so it's gonna be a good video it's gonna be a real quick video we're gonna be diving into my computer so i can give you guys the basics and understanding and to all my og subscribers out there yes your boy don't got glasses anymore well i still do but i'm using contacts i'm giving them a try i got a mean tan line right now because that's years of wearing glasses right now so i'm trying out this whole no glasses thing trying out this whole contact lens i might be getting lasik at the end of the year so I want to try it out and see what it's like to be able to see vision without something on my face, an obstacle on my face. So far, I like it. So far, so good. So I'm digging it. I'm digging it. But if you guys like this kind of video, please like and subscribe. I'll give you guys a second to do that because it helps so much. Thank you. Okay, so just for that reason, I'm going to reward you guys. So I'm going to bring my good old dog, Oogie, up here. Oogie, come up. Good boy. And here he is, the man himself, the OG the OG, look how big he is now, guys. So thanks for liking the video. He says thank you. And now we're gonna hop in my computer and we're gonna show you guys the basics of shipping your products from your supplier to Amazon. Let's do it. All right, people, let's get down to the nitty gritty of how shipping works. We're on my computer, I got a basic layout and I wanna go through the basics for you guys to really understand how the shipping works so you have a better idea when you're going to the business. I've shipped thousands and thousands of units from China all the way to the United States into multiple warehouses, different warehouses, Amazon included, 3PL included, my own place included. Uh, and there's a couple of different methods that we can go through, but I wanna get you guys on with the basics so you can have a better foundation and do this right so let's do this right hopefully you guys enjoyed my new look with no glasses let me know how you think i look with them or i mean without them i should say so give me some feedback on that but let's get into it so let's start off with some basic terminology you're gonna need to understand so you'll see these little acronyms ddp exw and other things like fob but these are the two we're gonna focus on ddp exw these are called inco terms or shipping terms these are terms agreed between the seller and the buyer on who's gonna be responsible for these goods basically so the first one you need to know is ddp which means that the supplier is responsible for your goods all the way from their warehouse all the way up to the point of delivery to the warehouse of amazon right and then exw is the supplier is only responsible up to the point where they finish packing the goods and it's ready for transport so once it's done at their warehouse then you are responsible from the warehouse all the way up to delivery to the amazon warehouse okay so those are two important uh terms that you're going to need to know when you're going into talking to your suppliers and understanding what shipping method you're gonna use because they are gonna talk about that. And you wanna be prepared and make sure that you know that you're not a noob, okay? That these people take you serious and they know you mean business. You know what you're talking about, okay? So let's go over these two methods. Method number one is gonna go from your supplier shipping the product to Amazon and then Amazon ships it to the customer. Okay, that's number one. So you're using your supplier as your shipper. Method number two is gonna go from supplier, your freight forwarder will then ship your goods to Amazon and the Amazon will ship your goods to the customer when it's bought, all right? So that's the way method number two is using a freight forwarder. That means you're using your own way of shipping, right? And we're gonna go through the pros and cons of understanding that. So those are the two main ways. Either your supplier is gonna ship your product or you're gonna have your own freight forwarder ship the product, that's it. So method number one of using your supplier as the shipper. So here are the pros. Super easy for beginners, all right? Because it's stress-free work. You already are talking to your supplier. They're already making your product so they know all the information of your goods. So you tell them, hey, I want it to be shipped to this location. They do all the work for you. You don't have to worry about it. Very hassle-free. There's no additional paperwork or info needed because they already have all that info on deck. And the supplier uses DDP shipping methods. That means they are responsible up to the point of it arriving to the Amazon warehouse, okay? And also you can sometimes negotiate price because they're gonna be using their own freight forwarder, so they're gonna be finding different 
uh, deals that will work better for you. Okay, so it is negotiable. Um, so those are the pros with method number one. Now, here's some cons, because there are some, some bad things about this, all right? So number one is gonna be the difficulty in communication. There's gonna be a lack of clarity because you're talking to somebody in China or overseas, wherever, where they don't have a clear understanding because they have to go from, you. it has to go from you to the supplier to the shipping agent to get all that information, right? So you don't have a direct access to get the information of like, hey, where's my shipping? Where's my, uh, where's the progress of my shipping? What's the estimated date of arrival? You know, what's happening with my, my product right now? There's a lack of information. So you're kind of just up in the air until it actually arrives. Uh, the next thing is that there's no tracking number until that product actually lands in the States. So you don't know what's going on up until it arrives into the States, which could be like 20 days. Uh, the next con about this is that it could be more expensive than getting your own freight forwarder. Uh, because that they are using DDP, they are taking most of the responsibility. It could be more difficult that way. Now, let's move on to method number two. This is using your own freight forwarder uh, where they're gonna handle it. They're gonna be responsible for the goods. So method number two, the, the pros about this is that you have a central location of where your products are gonna go. So when you launch uh, multiple products, let's say you have like five or 10 products, uh, that are live and you need to make reorders or you make need to make orders at any time, you will, you know that it's all gonna go to your freight forwarder. So your freight forwarder is gonna be handling all of that. They're all gonna be bringing it to one location and they're gonna ship it to wherever they need to go. So you have a central location for if you have multiple products. That's the good thing about that. So you kind of have a, a hub of like, hey, this I know where everything's at right now. So better organization. The next is that the, the freight is gonna be responsible for the goods. So we're gonna be using EXW when it comes to the shipping terms. Uh, this is gonna be the terms used for your freight forwarder and your supplier so they know like, hey, uh, the freight is gonna be responsible so you don't have to be responsible for that. I don't wanna pay any extra fees for that, okay? So they're gonna be using EXW and they're gonna be responsible for it. The next pro is you have much more clear communication because you're gonna be working with people, usually freight forwarders have people that are stationed in, um, in states and then also out of state as well. So there's the communication between them and you don't have to handle that. So you just talk to the in-state person representative to get your information and it's a lot quicker. The next pro is you have tracking technology, better tracking technology so you know where your product is. So even if it's in mid sea, you could tell like where it's at. Um, there's a lot of uh, different freight forwarders who have websites that are able to track live where your product is and where the boat is at. Uh, and they also give you a better uh, ETA. So you kind of know where expected. You kind of have a better idea of where things are at and when it's expected to come. And lastly, the next pro is sometimes it's cheaper. It, is, it can be cheaper sometimes to go with your own freight forwarder. It just takes a little bit more work to find a freight forwarder and work with them. So next up, moving on to the cons of using your own freight forwarder is that it's gonna require more work because you need to get more detailed information. You have to gather information from your supplier and give it to your freight forwarder. Uh, there's probably gonna be more documentation as well that you need to do with like customs and things like that. Uh, so there's a little bit more work, but it's not that much work. Uh, the next thing is it's non-negotiable. I don't know any freight forwarder that negotiates their pricing at all. It's pretty known that it won't be negotiable from there. So that's a bad thing about that. And then it requires communication from the supplier to the freight then to you. So there's kind of like that extra person in all of this this chain that is, uh, that's gonna be eh, not really difficult, but it's just kind of a, an, an extra wall or barrier you have to go through, right? So, but at least like you get direct access to contacting your forwarder versus like if you're using your supplier, you have to go from you to the supplier and the supplier to the shipping agent or the freight forwarder, right? Versus here, it's gonna be you directly to the freight forwarder so you know exactly what's going on. So overall, I'd say that if you're a beginner, I would recommend starting off with your first product using your supplier's um, shipping. Uh, so using method number one, it's just a lot more easier, uh, less stress fee, uh, less moving parts and, and factors you have to worry about. Uh, but once you start getting more products, getting more experience, I recommend moving into method number two, which is having your own freight forwarder. You're gonna have a lot more clear communication. You're gonna know where everything's at. Uh, you're gonna have a better experience with that. So I would recommend that for people who have multiple products and are a little bit more advanced into Amazon FBA. So that's basically how shipping works. That's how you go from supplier to an Amazon warehouse and the different methods that you can use to make this all happen, right? So there's no right or wrong. 
uh, just use the one that works best for you. But those are the two main ways to ship products from your supplier to Amazon. So hopefully this was very, very helpful. Hopefully this was a good breakdown and understanding of how shipping works. And if you guys have any more questions, comment down below. Again, links down below to all my mentorship program uh, that, that will help you guys out. You can apply or you can enroll, whatever you wanna do. And yeah, so I'm here to help you guys out. Hopefully you guys like this, got some information out of this. I will see you guys in the next one. As always, go make that money. Peace.